if it looks like you're watching my holiday video. But this is the home to perhaps the most gifted swimmer of all time. So much about being a champion probably involves natural environment, where you were brought up. Take Australia, for instance, where they know how to make the most of any body of water. This is Sydney's famous Bondi Beach. They will wait for hours out there just to catch the perfect wave. And it's not surprising that Australia has churned out so many swimming champions. Top of the list, of course, Ian Thorpe, the Thorpedo. Thorpe was picked to represent Australia at the record-breaking age of 14. He has since won dozens of medals, including five Olympic golds. Hello. How are you going? I'm swimming with Ian Thorpe tomorrow. I need something appropriate. Oh. This should do the trick. Mr Thorpe should be impressed with these. Now, where's the pool? Ian Thorpe, we're talking about being a champion. Well, I suppose you certainly qualify for that description. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Cheers. But when one looks at the descriptions of you and uh, one, look, one reads about you, the words that one see are dedicated, disciplined. Uh, these are, are, are fair compliments, would you say? Yeah, they're fair. They're, they're probably about 99.9% correct as well. Um, you know, there's people that are more dedicated than what I am. Um, but, you know, I'm still, like most athletes, are very, very dedicated to my craft. An obsession? Oh, it is, yeah, but, you know, I'm, I'm an obsessive kind of person, so... Um, you know, but a healthy obsession. Um, and, you know, it's... Uh, you know, now, for me, swimming is about refining that skill. Um, you know, the way that I feel the water, the way that I, I actually um, move and how it feels around me, you know, that's what I work on, and I enjoy that. Um, and that's how I become obsessive with what I do. This yeah, is the torpedo it doesn't, skin. It doesn't really, yeah, it's not... I get into this, I do, I promise. I think that I can get this on successfully. I it might be a bit, of a bit of trouble. You don't. Well, you should be able to get on. You're smaller than me. Um, so, I mean, it, it should go on. Um, so, but, look, if, if you can get it on um, without breaking it, without tearing it, yeah. without breaking the zip, yeah. um, I'll make a donation to the charity, to my charity. Yeah. Um, and if you do break it, you'll make a donation. And you're staying out here. His charity is the Fountain for Youth Trust. It's a big part of his life and helps support underprivileged children in Australia. You're 23. The one thing that comes across, particularly in your sport, is that there is a limited shelf life. What do you believe the shelf life is? Um, I think there's definitely a use-by date and people try and push on past that. Um, I think uh, it varies from athlete to athlete. I think, for me, I think it will be my mid-twenties. Your mid-twenties? Mid-twenties. Well, you're virtually there. Well, I am virtually there, so I'm saying there's only going to be a few more years. Beijing, basically. Beijing, basically, and then I'll make a decision. Mm -hmm. <sighs> there is no way my arm is going through that. Absolutely no way. How does somebody mentally prepare themselves to know that their career is at a peak at your young age? You know, I've done this for a long time, but I also know that I've got to close the book, I've got to put it away, and I have to move on to another place in my life. And a lot of athletes struggle at this point that they haven't prepared themselves to move on. They haven't actually, you know, said, what's my life going to be like after sport? Um, and they don't put in the mechanisms to be able to deal with it or to prepare for it. This is an extraordinarily mature response. Even you must admit that. I mean, most of us spend 40 to 50 years working on our careers on an upward trajectory and realise some point that it tails off and you're in trouble. Yeah. Yours is happening somewhere back here, mm. you know, where you have to actually to re rethink the whole plan. I do think about it. I have to. Um, you know, I, I have to work out what I want to do and, uh, you know, what the best point um, in my career 
will be where I decide to walk away from it. Okay. <clears throat> ah, I see what he means about the ripping of it. <laughs> Can I ask you a blunt question? Yeah. I guess you don't want a career in later life as Ian Thorpe has been swimmer. Most definitely not. But, you know, better to be a has-been <laughs> than a never-been. Uh, but, no, I don't. You know, when I, when I finish swimming, um, you know, I'll, I'll still enjoy going to swimming. But, you know, I don't see myself commentating. I don't see myself being, uh, you know, the, the guest writer in the newspaper, you know, talking about what the latest issue in swimming is. Um, it's not me. It's not what I want to be doing. You know, when I walk away from the sport, that's it. Just the way you're talking there, the ability to walk away from something that you have been so dedicated to with such mm. purpose and redirect that phenomenal energy, do you think that makes you a hard person? No, I, I think, no, the opposite, the absolute opposite. I am a soft person at best and, you know, I have moments that I can be hard um, and hard on myself, but to be able to step away from it is actually being satisfied with what you've done. Um, whereas if you're trying to cling on to it for a longer period of time, you, you're not satisfied um, and you, you're looking for something and you should be looking for something else in your life. <sighs> oh, I've got a cramp. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't think he's actually got hope and um, quite frankly, I don't, I don't have enough time. I've got to get to training. Um, it's not going to happen. All right, Ian, you win. You knew I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Frankly, how anyone gets that suit on will remain a mystery to me. Ian, your bet was quite safe, and the cheque is in the post.